Morning guys, welcome back. So yeah, today I've come to the Peak District to take on a little bit of a project, something I've been thinking about for a little while. Uh, what's inspired this is it's coming up for two years on the YouTube channel and this is one of the very first locations I did one of my first vlogs. So I thought it'd be great to come back here and try to capture a series of three different images that I can mount and put on my wall. So yeah, so I'm going to be sticking to one location down here and hopefully that's going to give me enough to work with to capture these three different images. I'm thinking maybe the centre image, maybe a water shot and then two intimate sort of woodland shots either side. So we've still got some lovely autumnal colours down here in this particular bit of woodland. There's some lovely beech and oak trees that are, are great. We've all got a bit of frost on them too. So yeah, let's get stuck into it. So I've been spending around about 20 minutes or so, you know, checking this place out and seeing what I can come up with. I think I've actually found my first subject. It looks really nice. Uh, the leaves have actually all fallen on most of the trees around here, actually, which I'm quite surprised about. But in the background, there's some uh, lovely brown golden leaves that I think are going to kind of draw the eye through the scene. So it's just a case of refining this now because there's so many distractions and, uh, you know, I've just got to try to eliminate as many of those as possible and just try to create a focal point in the image as well. So, yeah, I'm going to spend uh, as long as it takes here, I think, because I think there's quite a good image to be had. So, yeah, uh, yeah, I'm going to get cracking with it. So yeah, I'm really pleased with this image and I've spent quite a while now just eliminating certain things from the subject. The main problem I had was the sky. Uh, I really didn't want to capture too much of that sky because it just kind of distracted and led the eye out of the scene and it, and it just wasn't nice at all. So for me to be able to do that, what I've done is I've had to move away from the subject and then zoom in and then that's narrowed my field of view if you like. But obviously by doing that, what that's done is basically reduce my depth of field. So at f8, I've got, I'm going to have to take sort of six or seven images to get a sharp focus because I've got some very, very close foreground boulders that I want to try to incorporate in the shot, and it, which kind of leads the eye through to the beech tree, which is overhanging. And then there's some more pointed rocks in the bottom kind of right-hand third, if you like, which points up towards, it uh, looks like a, an oak sapling that is uh, still got leaves on it and it's all golden and brown and you know drawing the eye through towards that and i think i need to be able to get you know sharp focus right through to be able to capture this scene in you know in its full glory there's also a silver birch sapling on the right hand side which frames the shot as well so this circle if you like of trees and boulders and then in the far distance this oak sapling which you know i think really adds to this shot and it gives your eye somewhere to wander somewhere to look through the scene so that's my thought process and uh, yeah it's just a case of taking this shot so what I've decided to do is obviously like I said is focus stack this image I'm at f8 and I'm going to just focus on different parts of the scene and then blend those images together in Photoshop when I get back to post-production I'm at eighth of a second right now which is fine I'm on the tripod and I'm using the two second timer everything's in manual and I've obviously got my ISO as low as possible. So yeah, all in all, I think this shot's gonna work really well. It's gonna involve a fair bit of post-processing, but I do think it's actually worth it. And yeah, I'm gonna grab this shot now, guys. Really pleased with that last shot actually and I've kind of been scouting around in the same sort of area trying to find something else and I think because I'm creating this just series of three images the first image obviously the the framing was from the left over to the right hand side of the of the image I think that's going to make up my left hand side photograph in the three so now I'm really going to be trying to focus on the right hand side photograph of the three and I think for it to work, I think it almost needs to point back towards the centre image. So I think it's really good, you know, doing a project like this. It kind of really gets you thinking a little bit more about 
you know, different compositions that you perhaps wouldn't normally think about. Because now I'm looking for an image that basically starts on the right hand side and points towards the left. So both images point towards the center image, which is going to be a cascade of water. So yeah, I'm really enjoying this. It's been, uh, yeah, really, really good fun today. I was hoping to be able to catch a, an image here of this tree because that does actually start on the right hand side and come over to the left but I haven't really been able to make it work. I've spent about 15, 20 minutes on it. And to be honest, I think it's probably time for me to move on. And you know, sometimes you just get that feeling it's not gonna work. And I think that's the case of this image. So yeah, I'm gonna head on down and there's a bit of mist in the air as well. And still it's lovely frost on the floor. So yeah, beautiful, beautiful morning. So yeah, I'm gonna see if I could find this right hand side image for this set. So guys, I'm still looking for that elusive shot that starts in the right and points towards the left, which kind of is going to accentuate our focal image, our focal point of the three images that we're going to be shooting. So obviously that first one, I was really happy with that, you know, pointing over from the left hand side. I'm really trying to find a strong image as well to kind of match that. And that's the challenge really. I found lots of other things I'd like to shoot, but I haven't really been able to find a strong image that's going to match that. So. I'm going to keep looking, I'm not going to give up. I have seen a couple of compositions that start in the left and point over to the right. And what I might do, if I can't find anything, is flip one of those around and, uh, yeah, use that, you know, just flip it around in Photoshop. I think that'll work well. I don't have a problem with that. So, uh, yeah, I think that's probably what we'll end up doing. So I've actually managed to find a decent shot here, actually. Now, I have to <laughs> confess, it is moving from the left to the right, so I will need to flip this in Photoshop afterwards, but I, I don't see that being a problem, really. I'm quite happy to do that. And I think this is a really interesting shot. There's, there's a lot going on. It's, it's a lot to do with curves and how everything bends around. We've got this lovely mossy boulder that you might be able to see here. And then to the left-hand side, we've got this tree which is just bending over to the right hand side. And that's really cool. And what that kind of does, it creates this little sort of tunnel type pathway that kind of meanders through this, past this rock, and then leads the eye th further down to these mossy branches that are kind of bending over to the right hand side. And that's really pleasing to the eye, I think. Behind that, there's uh, some beech trees and the leaves are still golden brown, just kind of hanging in the distance. So there's a splash of like golden brown color in the background so we've got this mix between the, the you know the, the, the brown leaves the brown beech leaves and these mossy rocks and branches bending over and the atmospheric conditions as well just giving a little bit of separation as well which is really nice i think it really adds to the shot so again i'm gonna have to focus stack this image because i'm at around about 35 mil which is you know zoomed in a fair bit really um, but I'm only like a meter away from this boulder here with these leaves on so I'm probably going to end up taking four or five shots for this scene just because I'm so close to my foreground subject really so yeah just gonna have to take a few images bit of a pain in the butt really but you know I'll, I'll, it's the only option I've got really but if I, if I eliminate the boulder I also eliminate the tree so I want to get those in there I think it really adds to the shot so I'm gonna go with it I'm definitely gonna go with it I'm gonna take this shot and uh, yeah, see what else we can find. If, uh, if this one works out well, then I'll probably continue down to the water and get our center focal image to finish this set off. So yeah, see if we can get this one done. So here we are with shot number three. So I know where I wanted to come to take this shot. I've got, kind of got it in mind before I came this morning. So yeah, the scene behind me, you might be able to guess where it is. If you do, drop, a, drop us a comment below and uh, let me know. 
Yeah, so I'm going to head down this uh, precarious kind of slope here to the bottom and set the shot up. It might be quite noisy when I get down the bottom there, so I do apologise if there is some noise in the microphones. But yeah, it's quite a lot of water coming down here at the minute, so yeah, should make an interesting shot. And as well, like the mist is getting thicker as well, so it's quite atmospheric right now. So I'm really hopeful this could be a, a good one. So I've set the shot up and yeah, it looks really nice, quite pleased with it. What I've decided to do is try to eliminate the sky altogether. I didn't really want to capture any of the sky in this shot because the sky is just very white at the minute. There's a big contrast between what we've got down here in the foreground and obviously the sky. So yeah, I'm totally eliminating that, which is great. So I don't need to use any graduated filters or anything like that. And then I'm basically letting the water cascade from the top left-hand third cascade down through the image and kind of flow through all these boulders and I've paid particular attention to where the boulders are placed within the scene because basically I want to allow a pathway of water through the boulders so I've really tried to man manage where the boulders are in the shot to make sure we've got that continuous flow of water running through from the top left and third all the way down to the bottom of the image I think that works really well um, in terms of the composition, like I just said, the water kind of cascades from the top left and third, so that just kind of drifts down through the scene. So you've got this diagonal kind of aspect to it, which works really well. The boulders are all kind of triangular in shape, well, a lot of them are, so they kind of mirror each other as well. There's some fallen leaves on the boulders too, which really help add that sort of autumn feel to it. And we've got a beech tree just kind of branching out across the top of the cascade as well. So all in all, I think it's a nice shot. I think it's a nice centerpiece for these three images that we're going to be printing out. So yeah, uh, in terms of the camera, what I've decided to do as well, just to complicate things, you know me, uh, we've decided to take three different exposures, one at five seconds, one at about a tenth of a second, and one about a thirtieth of a second. And Basically what we're going to do is use my long exposure as a base exposure and then I'm going to paint some texture and detail back into that water with the quicker exposure times and that's just going to bring in some more of that detail back into the water so we've not got everything completely smoothed out. Hopefully it's going to be quite an artistic shot. I think it's going to be really nice. Um, there's no wind so it's completely on our side. Like I say it's quite atmospheric, there's a lot of mist and stuff in the air so that's really nice too. So yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and take these three shots. I've got the, to get the long exposure, I've got the polarizer on and that's kind of taking the glare off all this water as well, which is helping. And also I've got the six stop ND on, which is obviously giving us that five second exposure time. So that's a F8. And I'm focused on the boulder here down in the sort of center area. And that's giving us sharpness from front to back. And, and that's absolutely fine. So there's no focus stacking needed. I'm about three meters away from my foreground subject, so that's absolutely fine. So yeah, I'm gonna take this shot now, get it done. Really appreciate you watching, guys. At the end of the video, once I've printed these out, maybe adjusted the crops and stuff, I'll get them printed out and I'll show you the prints at the end and see what you think. So thank you so much for watching. I really, really appreciate your time. Please like, subscribe and share if you think others might like it. I'll see you next week, guys. Take care.